Well, good morning. Welcome to Southeast Baptist Church Online Bible Study. Coming to you from my kitchen this morning. Uh, welcome into my home. Uh, this morning, we're going to be looking at Psalm chapter 31. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 8 today. So if you haven't got your Bibles, I'd like to invite you to grab those. Uh, we're going to be looking at um, what happens when we feel down. How can God lift us up when we're feeling down? You know, one of the questions that I'd love to ask you as we get started this morning is, what do you do when you're feeling down or, or when you have the blues? Uh, what, are, what are the things that you do that, that can help you through those times? You know, we can often feel overwhelmed by our circumstances, financial strains and stresses, uh, health issues, family crisis. There's a million other things that we could bring up that, that, that really work to drag us down. But when we're feeling overwhelmed, we can either let our circumstances get us down or we can trust in God. You know, David wrote this psalm that we're going to look at today, Psalm 31, when he was feeling down. He felt alone, forsaken. Uh, he was emotionally drained and he was physically distressed. Uh, through David's words in Psalm 31, we can find the best answer uh, for us today of what do we do when, when we're feeling down in the dumps or when we have the blues. I want to invite you to turn in your Bibles to Psalm chapter 31. And as we read this morning, we're going to start in uh, verses 1 and 2 and take a look at those. Uh, read along with me, Psalm 31, chapter uh, verses 1 and 2. Look at what David writes here. He says, In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me quickly. Be to me a rock of strength, a stronghold to save me. You know, the verb translated here, seek refuge, uh, can be rendered flee for protection or to put trust in something. You know, this, this really denotes David's trust in God. David, uh, David's need to seek refuge stresses this insecurity and, and even a sense of helplessness that he's, that he's experiencing at the moment that he's writing this. And, you know, David was obviously struggling with, with some overwhelming circumstances. And, you know, many Bible scholars believe that, that uh, David wrote this during a time uh, when his son, Absalom, was rebelling against him, trying to, to take over his kingdom. You know, what are some of the circumstances that you think people uh, face that, that feel the heaviest to you or to them? You know, if, if we look back at circumstances in our lives, you know, there are those times where we feel the weight, that, that the heaviness of the circumstances that we're walking through. And David knew that God would provide for his needs. David knew that, that if he would just turn to God and even run to God, uh, that even though his circumstances, circumstances felt overwhelming, David knew that God would be there for him. David even cried out to God uh, for his help and for intervention, and, and we can do that as well. Look back with me uh, at Psalm 31, verses 1 and 2, and, and, and I want you uh, to take a look at what he says and really try to, really try to imagine the, the sense of emotion uh, that, that you feel uh, in times where you are just burdened you're, you're weighted down by your own circumstances. And, and imagine what David uh, would have felt. Look at what he says again. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me quickly. Be to me a rock of strength a stronghold to save me. You know, what are some of David's actions in these two verses? You know, if you look at, at, at verses one and two, you know, one of the first things David does is he turns to God for protection. And, you know, he shares his feelings uh, and even his thoughts with God. Um, what does this tell us about, about our role 
in trusting God with our burdens. You know, David felt completely weighted down by life's difficulties. But he knew that if he would just take his troubles to God, that God would be there and that God would take care of him. Look at what David continues on as he, as he continues on in this song. He says in verse 3, For you are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead me and guide me. You will pull me out of the net which they have secretly laid for me. For you are my strength. You know, David's use of words here for fortress and rock, they're, they're very symbolic. You know, God is, is a place of security for those who fear him. Uh, you know, this is not a new idea for David. You know, when David stood before King Saul, uh, before he was facing Goliath, you know, David said, uh, David said, it's the Lord who rescued me from the lion and the bear, and it's the Lord who's going to rescue me from Goliath. You know, look at the faith that he had and, and, and this idea of he knowing that God was going to rescue him from his circumstances. Um, you can look at when David uh, had the opportunity, not once, but twice, uh, to kill Saul um, and, and to end this life that he was having to live on the run. And yet David refused to take matters into his own hands. David was not going uh, to kill Saul. He was going to allow God to deliver him from his circumstances. You know, remember the times in David's life when, when he tried to fix things on his own, when he tried to, to fix his own circumstances, like, like the time after his sin with Bathsheba? You know, when Nathan confronted him with his sin, he, he, he did what we're all to do. He repented. You know, David also is the same person who wrote Psalm 32, 7, where he says, you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with joyful shouts of deliverance. You know, sometimes it's easy to be all prayed up and trust in God when, uh, when we see problems coming our way. You know, when we, when we can see them a mile away and they're coming and they're inching their way to us, you know, it's easy to be prayed up and ready when they get there. But what about when we're caught off guard? What about when, when it catches us unaware? You know, have you ever felt defeated or depressed you know you know god is still our refuge he's still our fortress and all we have to do is turn to him you know one of the things that is is, is important to note here especially as we begin looking at at, at this lesson today it, it's important to recognize you know that uh something that the author of our Bible study today points out is, you know, clinical depression is, is, is certainly totally a different situation than, than just a feeling of depression, you know, where, where, where one moment you feel depressed and, and, and it's gone. Uh, and so I don't want us to get the two of those things uh, confused. But if we, if we take a look here, you know, David, David knows that, that, those circumstances that he's enduring are so overwhelming to him and, and they, they're crushing him. The weight of his circumstances are just crushing. And yet he still recognizes under the circumstances, still feeling that, that sense of weightiness pressing down on him. He still knows that, that God is his refuge. God is his source of strength. And that's where he's to turn to. In verses 5, look how he continues writing here. He says, Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have ransomed me, O God, uh, or O Lord, God of truth. I hate those who regard vain idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad in your loving kindness because you have seen my affliction. You have known the troubles of my soul, and you have not given me over into the hand of the enemy, you have set my feet in a large place. Listen, listen to the total, absolute trust in David's words. Again, in verse five, listen to what he says in verse five again. Into your hand, I commit my spirit. 
You have ransomed me, O Lord, God of truth. Now, where have we heard this before? You know, in, in Luke, we read about Jesus hanging on the cross in complete, utter agony. And yet he utters these exact same words, you know, as he hung there, trusting his life into the hands of the Father. You know, you and I can do the very same thing. When, when we feel the crushing weight uh, of our circumstances and, and it just seems overwhelming and un unbearable, you know, we also can trust our lives, everything that we are, into the hands of God and allow God to deliver us from our circumstances. You know, we don't need to place our trust in our circumstances. We certainly don't need to put our trust in our feelings, those things that are so fickle. They're, you know, they come and they go, they rise and they they fall, you know, but, but instead of putting our trust in the, our circumstances or our emotions, our feelings, you know, we can place everything that we are into the hands of God, you know, give him our body, our mind, our emotions, all those things that make us up of who we are and trust that God will deliver us. God will take care of us. You know, in verse seven, David even continues on and he vows uh, to rejoice and to be glad because of God's love, regardless of his circumstances. You know, David's actions here, he, he, he's, he's stating what he's going to do. I will rejoice. You know, this ability that David had to rejoice and to be glad, regardless of his circumstances, it's rooted not in, in and of himself. It's not rooted in David's. You know, there's nothing great about David that, that gives him the ability to do that other than the fact that David is able to, to trust in God's unwavering love for him. And, and David knows that, that God has always loved me. God has always been there for me. God has always delivered me. And I can always trust in God. And that's the, that's the root and the source of David's ability to, to say that he can and will rejoice and be glad even in his circumstances that, that are so overwhelming and you can hear the, the crushing weight again that, that he is experiencing in these circumstances. You know, for those of us uh, who are in a covenant relationship with the Lord, God has an unwavering love for you and I as well. And, and because of that unwavering love, we too can choose just like David, to rejoice, knowing that God loves us, he is never far from us, and regardless of our circumstances, he will deliver us. And that brings me to a question I have to ask. You know, how has God proven to be trustworthy in your own life? How does it make you feel to know that God sees your affliction and he knows what troubles you? You know, the word used here in verse seven, to know or, or, or to be known, uh, it's used here to, to depict an intimate personal relationship. And if you look at this again in verse seven, in that context, you, you see that he says, I will rejoice and be glad in your loving kindness because you, God, have seen my affliction. You, God, have known me intimately. You know my troubles intimately. You know, it's this whole idea, again, that, that God is not far off. God is right there. God has a personal knowledge of what you and I are going through. And in times of despair or times of depression, uh, when we feel like no one cares, I want to assure you that, that God does care. Um, sometimes we may feel like, like we're alone in our struggles, like no one, uh, no one cares, no, one, no one's there for us. But God has not left you. Um, faith is such a secure confidence in God that we act like we have what we seek most from him before we actually have it. Let me repeat that again. Listen to this. Faith is such a secure confidence in God that we act like we have what we seek most from him him before we actually have it. Such a powerful picture of what faith really is. You see, 
this faith is rooted in the character of God. It's not rooted in my ability or your ability. It's not even rooted in our actions. It's rooted in the character of who God is. Now remember when you were drowning. Uh, remember back to the last, that last um, circumstance that you were walking through. Maybe you don't have to look very far. Maybe some of you, you know, right now, you're, 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 this weight that we're talking about is very pressing on you right now. You know, it, it, when you're drowning in your own depressing uh, thoughts and feelings, you know, God will always deliver those who choose to look to Him despite their circumstances. Let me make sure you hear that again. God will always deliver those who choose to look to Him despite their circumstances. And we have to remember that, that God's deliverance from those circumstances, from those things that are crushing us, may be kind of like David when he was running from Saul. It may not happen in your timing. It may happen in his timing. But God will always be faithful to deliver you. You know, this leads me to another probing question, I guess. And that question is, what can we do as a group of people to lift one another up during these difficult times? You know, when you know someone is struggling, when you see someone is struggling, what can you personally do to help them? You know, the world, the world really seems to praise this idea of self-sufficiency. But God calls us to be totally dependent upon Him. You know, people praise others for, for their resilience. But God calls us to lean on Him and to be there for other people. You know, David didn't hide his feelings uh, or his emotional struggles from God. And, and maybe we shouldn't either. Maybe we should be willing to be just as transparent with God uh, as David. You know, just as David cried out to God for help uh, and for God's intervention, you and I could do that as well. And I want to challenge you uh, that, that as we read through these psalms and have looked at these psalms to recognize you know, that God is not far off. God is right there. God wants us to come to Him. You can, regardless of what your circumstances are, you can trust in God to deliver you from those circumstances. And until He does deliver you from those circumstances, you can trust as a child of God that He will walk with you through the struggles and He will be right there by your side and that He will carry you through them. And when you get to the other side, then, then you will be able uh, to say, just as David, I know, I know that I can depend on God. I know that God will deliver me. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much uh, for these wonderful words of, of encouragement that we've gotten today. Thank you for the, the, the promise of knowing that you will never leave us and that when we feel so uh, crushed by our, our current circumstances, when life is crushing, that we can depend on you and we can trust in you. Father, I pray that you would help us to run to you with our struggles, to run to you when we feel that weight is, that is bearing down on us and to trust that you will deliver us and to remain faithful by your side until you do. We love you, Jesus. All these things we ask in your name. Amen. I hope you guys have a great morning. I uh, look forward to having you in our services today. Uh, virtually, of course, if you're here, I uh, would love for you to jump over to our church Facebook page or to uh, YouTube watch our services and uh, not just watch, but participate with us. I believe with all my heart that God has a very special word for, for you today. Uh, we'll see you there.